The electric eel boasts what could be the most amazing and scary ability in the animal kingdom, electricity. This incredible eel can discharge powerful electrical bursts reaching a stupefying 860 volts, over seven times stronger than a standard wall socket. That's one super shock. But is there anything that can stand up to its formidable power? What about the deadly alligators that share the same waters? Well, pull on your rubber gloves because we're about to find out exactly how this showdown will end and take a look at some other terrifying and dangerous eels too. A shocking discovery. My love for superhero movies has made me totally obsessed with the idea of having superpowers of my own. Unfortunately, it's impossible for a human to shoot blasts of electricity, but not for an electric eel. This famed water warrior patrols the rivers of South America, and as well as its shocking touch, it's also capable of growing to a crazy eight feet in length and 44 pounds in weight. That means the biggest would stand taller than Shaq and weigh as much as seven bricks. Jeez. For centuries, people believed there was only one species of electric eel in existence. But then in 2019, scientists made a shocking discovery. <laughs> Get it? It turns out there's not one, not two, but three different species of the electricity producing regulars. And though pretty similar, all three of them are as strange and creepy as they are cool. Unlike most fish, their gills are vestigial, meaning they're left over from one of their ancestors and don't serve much of a purpose anymore. They actually breathe through their mouths, so they have to surface to take a breath like a whale or dolphin. Weird, right? But you know what else they do with their mouths? Spit. Like, a lot. Not because they're especially rude or anything, but the males make nests for their young out of it. Yep, gross, bubbly, saliva slathered nests. Yuck. I had some pretty gross bed situations in my college days, but none were ever covered in my own dad's spit level bad. I know what you're thinking though. Let's talk about the whole electric thing. Sure, but first we need to go back to the year 1800. German scientist Alexander von Humboldt was on a trip to South America observing some of the natives hunt electric eels. They'd herd a load of horses into a pool filled with the eels which provoked the fish to attack them. An attack they would, pressing themselves against the hoofed mammals and shocking them over and over again until they were so exhausted the fishermen could safely catch them. Damn, that's rough for the eels and the horses. But Alexander noticed something especially weird about the whole affair. Some of the eels had leapt out of the water to attach themselves to the upper parts of the horses and shock them. Whoa. The curious observation became a legendary tale that helped propel Alexander to fame and incite newfound interest in the mysterious creatures. Why did they jump out of the water? And how could they generate so much electricity in the first place? He was determined to find out, so he captured some, and being a man of science, began rigorous, complicated experiments on them. Nah, I'm just messing with you. He actually electrocuted himself and his assistant with them over and over again for four hours. Yeah, really. The daring duo claimed their arms ached well into the following day, yet they didn't get much closer to figuring out how the animals actually worked. Nope. Our true understanding wouldn't come until much later. So what do we know now? Well, a whopping 80% of an electric eel's body is composed of specialized electric organs. There's the main organ, hunter's organ, and sac's organ. Everything else that our zappy friend needs to survive, like its brain, is tetris into the front of the eel. The electric organs do exactly what you'd expect and allow the eel to fire off electrical charges of varying intensities. In short, these organs are made up of hundreds of thousands of electrocytes, specialized muscle cells capable of producing an electric charge. They're arranged in stacks, which allows current to flow through them easily and means that although each electrocyte can only produce a minute amount of voltage on its own, Together, they're capable of much, much more. 
When it's go time, the eel sends a signal to these cells through its nervous system to produce a charge. Cool. Even though the intricate process wasn't fully understood back in Alexander's time, enough was known about it for the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta to invent the electric battery in 1800. Like us, eels use electricity for all manner of things. They employ weak shocks to communicate with other eels, and because they're mostly blind, they rely on using electrical charges to see their prey and map their surroundings. Think of it like a built-in radar system for navigating the murky waters. Special motion sensitive hairs run along the eel's body capable of detecting even the slightest of movements. When the hairs detect something, the eel fires off a small charge. This makes the muscles of any nearby prey like fish, amphibians, or even small mammals convulse and allows the predator to pinpoint their exact location. Then when it's confident, it'll fire as many as 400 electrical charges at its target a second, paralyzing them completely before it goes in and devours them. Whoa. The whole process happens so quickly the human eye can barely follow it. When facing a particularly big or tough challenger though, like a horse or alligator, electric eels are met with a problem. While submerged in a river or lake, the strength of their electrical discharge is reduced because the current distributes throughout the water. It's enough to tackle smaller foes, but not stronger ones. But the eel does have a couple of options if it wants to deliver a supercharged bolt. For one, it can wrap itself around its target, placing its head and tail close together. It does this to maximize direct contact with its prey, and because its head is positively charged and its tail is negatively charged, bringing them closer boosts the strength of the zap. There's also another, more dramatic tactic they sometimes use. Remember old Alexander von Humboldt and the leaping eels he saw? Well, he wasn't lying. Electric eels have been known to jump from the water and latch onto prey that's partially submerged. That way, they're shocked doesn't lose any potency through the water, and they're in direct contact with their prey, making the attack even stronger. Naturally then, most animals stay well away from them. However, some are brave or foolish enough to try taking one on. <laughs> All right, that was just a playful doggo, but how about, I don't know, an alligator? Yep, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Back in 2005, a man was walking beside a river in Brazil when he stumbled across an insane sight. An alligator seemingly locked in a showdown with an electric eel. Jeez. The alligator grabs the eel in its mouth, but as we know, electric eels don't go down without a fight. This one starts shocking the gator with a super powerful charge. Remember, it's out of water and making direct contact with its adversary. The reptile starts to convulse, causing its jaw to clamp shut on the eel, who instinctively continues to discharge electricity, making the whole situation worse for both of them. Damn, there was no way out and they both unfortunately seemed to pass away. The eel from the bite and the gator from the electric shock. In this case, the eel's crazy ability actually backfired because the electricity ended up locking that gator's jaw muscles tightly down on it. Even so, the lesson's clear for potential predators. No matter how tough they think they are, attacking an electric eel could still mean curtains. And if there were, say, 10 eels, there'd be no competition. But the slippery suckers don't hunt in packs, right? Right? Well, yes, they do, actually. In another twist, multiple eels, each firing hundreds of electrical shocks at their prey at the same time, were spotted in a different Brazilian river in 2014. Cripes, that sounds like the premise for a new horror movie. Fortunately for most of us, a single zap from an electric eel is painful, but not particularly dangerous unless you've already got a heart condition. The main threat would be panicking and causing further injury or drowning. However, if a whole horde of the things threw themselves onto you, it'd be a different story entirely. Let's hope they don't develop a taste for human. 
But there's one thing bugging me about all this. With that many eels in close proximity, all sending electricity through the water, how do they not shock themselves? Well, we don't really know. They have no natural immunity to electricity, so it's a genuine risk every time they use their superpower. If their current passes through their heart, it's eel soup time. Some people reckon eels position their body specifically to minimize the chance of the current passing through their vital organs. Others theorize that their skin is both thick and slimy enough to protect them from the worst. Perhaps both are correct. Giving them no natural immunity seems like a pretty big boo-boo by nature there though, doesn't it? But nature isn't the only one making boo-boos when it comes to these guys. Wait for it. Despite being commonly referred to as eels, electric eels are not actually eels at all. Dun dun dun! Huh? Yep, though similar to eels, they're actually a type of knife fish, which is a far more badass name if you ask me. Don't worry though, because we've got some real eels coming up next. And believe it or not, they're far more dangerous and terrifying than anything you've just seen. But you know what's even more terrifying? the thought of missing out on any of my new amazing content. So give those like and subscribe buttons a tap and get ready for a whole world of knowledge at your fingertips. All finished up? Nice. Let's swim on over to some more scary eels. King Conger. Hundreds of feet beneath the ocean dwells a carnivorous serpentine monster known for biting chunks out of the faces of unfortunate divers. No, this isn't a creature I pulled out of the Necronomicon, but the Conger family of eels. Looks kinda cute, doesn't it? Well, don't be fooled. The European Conger can reach intimidating lengths of nearly 10 feet, and they're the heaviest eels in the world, getting as bulky as 159 pounds. That's as heavy as an adult human. Damn, not so cute now but they live so far beneath the surface that you'd never run into one of these mid-swim, would you? Well, you might. The hulking beasts are occasionally spotted closer to the surface, especially once the sun sets. Congers are ambush predators that are most active at night, and although they're practically blind, they have a superb sense of smell, which they use to locate their prey. They'll chow down on all sorts, including crustaceans, small fish, and even other eels. But that's not why they're scary, oh no. They're scary because they also have a peculiar taste for human. Over in Irish waters back in 2013, experienced diver Jimmy Griffin was 82 feet below sea level, exploring the murky ocean depths when he suddenly felt a sensation like being punched in the face, hard. Within seconds, he realized that a conger eel had bitten hold of his cheek. As if that wasn't bad enough, it started thrashing and twisting around, all whilst latched onto him. Amazingly, Jimmy managed to keep himself calm and the eel eventually swam away. So thankfully, Jimmy survived the horrific ordeal, but he'll have the marks for the rest of his life. Yeesh. As terrifying as this tale is, it's incredibly rare for congers to attack humans. The one in question probably mistook a part of Jimmy's wetsuit or a flash of light from his face mask for a small fish. Still, I'd prefer to steer clear. I quite like my face as it is. Not that you'll ever see it. That's a moray. When it comes to eels, morays are the ones most commonly thought of as dangerous. The spooky nocturnal predators bear vicious rows of razor sharp teeth. And with around 200 species of these fanged fiends in existence, there's enough out there to fuel my nightmares forever. The biggest, the giant moray, can reach a whopping 10 feet long and is so tough that it competes for food with some species of sharks. Jeez. But they're not the scariest. I'm giving that prize to the fang tooth. <laughs> I would not want to be on the wrong side of those teeth. Thankfully, this guy prefers to snack on crustaceans and small fish. Hmm, I still don't think i trust that face. Indeed, moray attacks do happen, though like congers, they're very rare. Some divers are so confident they hand feed them. This is a bad idea. 
The eyesight of mores isn't great, so it wouldn't be surprising for them to mistake your fingers for juicy morsels. And if a moray does bite, it isn't pretty. Moray eels have pharyngeal jaws. Basically, a second set of jaws within the first set, just like the xenomorph from Alien. That's right. Morays can't swallow their prey the traditional way due to their head shape. So after snagging an unlucky critter in their first jaw, the second jaw lunges forward to drag it back down into the eel's stomach. Ew. If that wasn't unsettling enough, morays are incapable of releasing prey until they've swallowed it. So if they get a hold of you, you're locked in unless you can muster the strength to pry them off. I've got to say though, if I saw this thing approaching me from the depths, there's no way I'd be getting close enough for it to bite me. It seems to be a particularly unusual looking moray with some kind of facial deformity, giving it that eerie Loch Ness monster vibe. Even if it is proof mythical sea monsters exist though, it's safely locked up in an aquarium. So at least you're not gonna run into it next time you're at the beach. Unhinged, unsettled. The human race has only explored a minuscule 5% of the planet's ocean. So all manner of mysterious undiscovered beasties could live in those dark depths. What we have discovered doesn't give me much hope there's anything nice down there. Say hello to the pelican or gulper eel. Lurking as deep as 10,000 feet beneath the waves, it gets its nickname because this horrifying creature has an absolutely massive mouth. Hey, it's my spirit animal. Seriously, this freaking thing can open its jaws to a widely disproportionate degree to swallow prey much bigger than itself. Researchers reckon the huge balloon-like shape this creates could also work to intimidate would-be predators by making the eels seem bigger than they actually are, though we can't be 100% sure. What we do know is they use a red or pink light on the end of their tail that shines eerily in the dark depths of the ocean and lures in prey. It's a trait called bioluminescence that's shared with many deep sea predators, and it might also be used to help gulper eels communicate with one another. As for what prey the ominous light bulb attracts, probably crustaceans, cephalopods, and fish, though what size is anybody's guess considering its massive mouth? Pretty much everything we know about these guys is eerily unsettling, but perhaps even more unsettling is everything we don't know and maybe never will. These creatures are incredibly mysterious and inhabit a world we could never survive in. So basically, gulper eels are aliens. Slimy, inflatable aliens. Extra hot eel. Admit it, you love cuddles. That being said, there are some things you really shouldn't cuddle, like proximity mines, people you've just met, and fire eels. Although extremely popular among home aquarium enthusiasts due to their distinctive colors and relaxed personalities, they harbor a dark secret. See, they're coated head to tail in sharp spines all along their dorsal fin. Combine that with their tendency to violently thrash about when under perceived threat and you can see why fishermen fear catching them. How about fire eels that are already captive though? If they're in your own aquarium and they're friendly with you, what's the problem? Well, they have one more defense mechanism. They can produce toxic slime. So if you're thinking about owning one of these for yourself, whatever you do, don't handle it without protective gloves, lest you fall victim to the ooze. All right, so it's not gonna melt your hand off or anything, but it's strong enough that it could make you pretty ill. Or should I say, ew? <laughs> it's okay, I'll see myself out. A face only a mother could love. Now, beauty is most definitely in the eye of the beholder. That said, anyone that sees beauty in this guy may need those eyes checked. This is the wolf eel, and he's not just ugly, he's straight up terrifying. Technically, wolf eels are part of the wolfish family, but this guy's so bizarre, I had to show you. Found exclusively in the North Pacific Ocean, they can grow up to a whopping 8.2 feet in length, and to sustain all the mass that comes with that, they need a lot of food. Like crustaceans, small fish, and even, wait for it, sea urchins. Say what? That's right, these bad boys have broad, powerful enough teeth 
that can just crunch straight through the sharp venomous spines. Whoa, I don't like to think what they could do to my little finger. Luckily, there's little chance of a wolf eel attacking you. Despite their monstrous appearance, they're actually very friendly. They've even been known to eat right out of people's hands and enjoy a good stroke. Like most animals, however, they will chop on you if they're provoked, so for the sake of your fingers, don't call them rude names or anything, okay? Ancient Abominations As you've seen by now, creatures that live in the water are often some of the scariest around, and they also seem to have way more teeth than necessary. Wait, what the hell is that? We don't know 100% for sure, but it looks like a snaggletooth snake eel. And yeah, I hate it. Only one specimen of this monster has ever been officially recorded. So all we really know is that it lurks somewhere in the eastern central Pacific Ocean. <sighs> Looking at it though, I'd imagine ignorance is bliss. But what if I told you that unfortunately, there's another creeptastic underwater denizen we do know a lot about and it has even more teeth. Oh yes, this is the sea lamprey. If I had to see it, so do you. Lampreys are carnivorous, parasitic fish that can be found in both fresh and salt water. Unsurprisingly, their most recognizable feature are those mouths, which are filled to the brim with over 100 razor-sharp teeth, putting the snaggletooth eel to shame. They use them to latch onto prey and bore into their flesh in order to drink their blood. Ugh. And to prevent the delicious blood from clotting, they secrete a special mucus that keeps it flowing, so they can gorge until they're full. Then, when the host is too weak to carry on and they've completely sucked the life out of it, they move on to another. What? These things are literal nightmares. A single lamprey kills around 40 pounds of fish in its lifetime. Considering these thin spaghetti demons only reach around 30 inches in length, that's seriously impressive, but still horrifying. And they've been terrorizing European rivers since, well, before Europe. In fact, the monstrous horrors existed before even the dinosaurs did, some 500 million years ago. Well, uh, can we send them back, please? Does this thing have any redeeming qualities? Well, apparently... Yes, it supposedly tastes great. The ancient Greeks and Romans used to dine on lamprey and Britain's royal family are apparently still big fans today. The late Queen Elizabeth II was even cooked lamprey pie during her 2012 Diamond Jubilee celebrations. To each their own, I suppose. I'd rather not put anything that looks like that near my mouth, thanks. Would you chow down on some lamprey pie? Let me know down in the comments below. Chest burster. I'm no fisherman. Whenever I've tried, I've only ever reeled in stuff like old boots and shopping carts. After seeing what a group of fishermen hooked in Thailand back in 2016 though, I'm just fine with my lack of success. Yikes, I definitely wouldn't want to put my uh, finger in that. It may look like a chestburster from the Alien movies, but this is no prop. It's actually an eel goby, an exceedingly rare underwater whore with a multitude of different species, all equally creepy. These unnerving creatures lurk largely in muddy estuaries, places where streams and rivers meet the ocean. Man, I hate these things. Looks like they have one massive set of jaws and no other features, but they do have eyes. They're just so small you can hardly see them. In the murky waters they live in, there isn't much use for eyesight, so they rely on their keen sense of smell instead. What about those scary teeth though? Well, they're not made for eating algae, I'll put it that way. Gobies eat small fish and invertebrates, and luckily they don't have the strength to bite through human. So in this case, looks are very deceiving. Phew. In fact, we're more likely to eat them. They're actually considered a delicacy in Japan. So because of their obvious similarities to infant xenomorphs, Sega held a very strange eating competition in the country when they released their video game, Alien Isolation. 
they gave Hungry Gamers the opportunity to win a copy of the game by feasting on eel gobies. <laughs> no thanks. I'd pay good money not to have to do that. Thank you. Well, I think that's just about enough horrifying eel monsters for one day. Which one did you find the creepiest? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.